It's good to be home. It is really good to be home. Before we get started, are there any announcements? I have to apologize. I put some sealer on the ramp, and it's a little slippery, so we got to figure that out. I did have it roped off, so when Juanita leaves or whatever, we can help people walk down the ramp. That's why I had it roped off. Okay, good to know. I was going to say, it's not even icy yet. I thought maybe you were preparing for ice before we got out. Today is Donut Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the month, so if you're able to stay afterwards for a little bit, join us for some donuts and some orange juice or juice and whatever else is back there. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. Is there coffee back there? I don't know, Jimmy. Might be, if Jimmy makes it. There is. <laughs> So, if there are no other announcements, then Dwayne will open us with the prelude. If you join me in our call to worship this morning, friends, we gather this day to celebrate life, life in the, of God. the life we share with one another in community, to, know the warmth of love and compassion. to have the assurance that someone cares, to be, confident of our worth. To be bold to love in return, to be washed over with grace, to be accepted as we are. To know the life that Jesus gives in abundance. Let us be grateful for the joy of our life. This is to know a bit of God. And let us worship our God together. Let's all stand together and sing 522. I love to tell the story. We'll do verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> it's early. We'll just start it this way. <laughs>
invited if you would join me in our opening prayer. Lord Jesus, help us to follow and find you here today in the places where we work, worship, and meet people. Help us to see through your eyes the needs of others, to offer compassion, to welcome all with your love and truth. Help us to be attentive to the needs of others, wherever we go and whatever we do. Help us change the things that contradict God's love by the freedom we find in you. Amen. There is a name I love to hear. Oh, how I love Jesus. It's on in number two. in the last two weeks? Because you. <laughs> you don't know? Because a bunch of us went to Italy far, far away and we got home late last night. Have you ever heard of this guy? You ever heard of Pinocchio? <laughs> this is Pinocchio. And I was looking while we were singing one of these pencils, it looks like <laughs> Pinocchio's father, Giuseppe, already started whittling on But Giuseppe lived in Italy in a town we went to called Assisi. And he didn't have a son. And he was a cobbler. Cobblers used to make shoes out of leather. But he also used to work with wood. So he wanted a son. So he made himself a son. And I should have done some research on why, but do you know what happened to Pinocchio? He came to life. He became human. And he used to fib. That's another word for lie. And you know what happened to him when he fibbed? His nose grew. Aren't you glad that that doesn't happen to us? You know what I would look like? Instead of going wow. this way, my nose would go this way. <laughs> Get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> But anyway, we wanted to bring you something home. So just like God didn't have a son, and so Jesus was born, and Christmas is coming, and we're going to talk about all that. But all Pinocchio is known for is if he lies, his nose grows. 
But Jesus came to save us all. And we need to be kind to others. I didn't know. Everything was done three weeks in advance. And look it, it's raining and it says be kind. <laughs> so what do you know? So here's a Pinocchio pencil for you from Italy. You want this one? And this one's for your sister. I like your Seabrook house, Sam. Oh, there you go. Well, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this day and for the kids that are here today. And we thank you for the many lessons we learn about God and his son, Jesus. And even though Pinocchio was fictional and he wasn't real, but it's always good to tell the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. I got to tell you guys a joke. I just thought of it. <laughs> there was this, there were these three kids and they were all in a park and there was this dog and the kids were like, they, the, this man didn't know if he was, the kids were trying to hurt the dog. So we went up to him and he the, the man said, what are you guys doing? And he said, we're trying to see who can tell the biggest lie and whoever tells the biggest lie gets to keep the dog. And the man was just mad that the kids were wanting to tell lies. And he said, I never told a lie when I was a kid. And the kids got in a huddle and said to the old man, you get the dog. <laughs> because he was lying when he said he never told a lie when he was a kid. Did you clean your room? Did you eat all your peas? Yes, you do that. You do that? She loves veggies. Oh, well, always tell the truth. <laughs>
applied this week and no plans are made yet, but keep Joyce, Mark, and his sister all in your prayers. Um, I do have a brother, Dan, as well. Dan? He must be much older than us. No, Dan is the oldest. He, he works at Groves. He's been there for a long, long time. Okay. He's in between us. Okay. Anybody else? <coughs> I thank everybody for their prayers while we were gone. I at least, there's as Paul Harvey says, the rest of the story. But I did get everybody back safe to the United States. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. You didn't leave Donna with the birds in the St. Mark Square? She's picking up the dog. Oh. And poor Don has been golf deprived for three weeks. She's so sad. In the rain? Yes. <laughs> wow. Don was a trooper. You would have thought he was the tour guide. He, if I said we're going to go up to the corner and make a left, he went up to the corner and started to the left. And, but he was easy to find because he had on bright colors all the time. So, anybody else? If not, let's take these prayer requests to the Lord. Father, we do thank you for this day and for the beauty of fall and with the fall comes so much um, change and weather and color, and we just pray that we would see the beauty in all of it. We do pray for many people today that we have brought before the congregation, and we especially want to pray for the people of Maine as they've had another shooting up there, and mm -hmm. we are grateful that the person who is responsible is no longer at large and I just pray that you will give each of those families strength as they try to wrap their arms around what's happened and that you would fill them with your love and your grace. We pray that you'll be with the Butler family as at the time of Clyde's passing, we pray that you will be with Joyce and the rest of the family as they start this new journey alone without Clyde and. I just pray that the memories that they have of a life well lived will continue with them and to carry on his legacy. We do pray for Megan and the baby as there's still so many things going on that you will just protect and keep them safe and give the doctors wisdom as they meet this week to make further decisions in the progress of her birth. We do pray for Rose, who has had a biopsy this past week, that you will just be with her and just comfort her as she waits. There's nothing worse than waiting. And so we just pray that the end result will be good news on this biopsy. For Hannah, I just pray that you will be with her as she fights this meningitis, that you will just help the medications and use the doctors for her quick and responsive healing to whatever is going on in her body. We now ask that you will be with us the remainder of the service, that everything we say and do would bring glory to you. As we now pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our words of grace today. Compassion means to suffer with someone, to actually join in the suffering. When others make mistakes, act in opposition to our values, or suffer undue wrong, we who are compassionate offer support through prayer and actions, not just as a church on Sunday, but by making it a way of life in everything that we do as we reflect God's goodness to others. Treat them with kindness and compassion, even if you never get it back in return. And when we are actively following Jesus, others will be able to see his love shine through us. May we look for ways to follow Jesus in everything that we do this week. Thanks be to God.
our scripture readings this morning. The first one is from Psalms 146, verses 2 through 8. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those who help is or is the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are down or bowed down, and the Lord loves the righteous. Then Ephesians 4, 29-32. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you.
Thank you, Dwayne. You did good for not playing for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben, I think, is back in two. He's down in South Carolina, so he said he'd be back by Thanksgiving. So we're lucky to have built-in Dwayne. Well, one Sunday, a visitor came to a church, and he was wearing old jeans and a flannel shirt that looked like he had just come out of the coal mine. And as the minister was trying to make his way after church to the, this new visitor, a couple of people said, look what that man's wearing. And so the man got up and had a nice conversation with them, and um, he said, I might be back next week. And so the minister said, you might want to say a prayer before you come to church next week and ask God what would be appropriate to wear in his house. And the man left and the next week he came back and he was wearing the exact same clothes he had worn the week before. And so after church, the minister went up to him and said, I thought I told you to pray to God and ask him what you should wear to Sunday. And he said, I did. And he answered me. But he told me he was never welcome in that, this church. <laughs> Okay. I've had better. Well, I hope that God is present in this church, and I pray that he is always with us. And as most of you know, 12 of us went to Italy for two weeks, and everything went great. As I said, I got home, everybody back to the United States safely. We only had a train strike in Florence, and we were sitting there with our luggage. We were way early, and all of a sudden, on the board, um, any of you ever watch the movie Final Destination? There's those boards and it lights up all the cities, the towns, the times, the train numbers. And all of a sudden it went canceled, 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 canceled. And people said to me, didn't you know there was a train strike today? Well, we didn't ever turn, did anybody turn a TV on in the room? Yeah. Roger. He did. <laughs> but I mean, we saw no news or new, no newspapers the whole time we were gone. Yeah. But last night on our way home, and we had ended up driving in three cars of four. So the Calkins family was in one, the Palmers were in another, and Dwayne, you've been replaced with um, Diane's new brother, um, Dwayne. I'm her twin. <laughs> so it was the twin trip. So either Diane got a lot younger or Dwayne just aged. <laughs> but last night as we were on our way home, we were two miles from the Baumhardt exit. There's a sign that says, Baumhardt Road, exit two miles. And all of a sudden, our life changed. There was a semi in my blind spot, and I clipped the front of the semi, and we went like that. And the whole side of my truck is totally smashed. The window broke that Diane was sitting in, and it pushed us per the Ohio, the, what do they call? Trooper. The trooper. That it pushed us 1,000 miles, 1,000 feet. <laughs> 1,000 feet. So I was probably going 65, 70. It was going 65 or 70, and it, we never hit a wall. If it would have hit us more forward or more backwards, we probably would have spiraled and rolled. But it just pushed us directly forward. And all we saw, I mean, we all saw different things. Um, when I woke up, all I saw <laughs> oh, was the no. grill of the truck and the barrier in front of me. So, because we were going sideways as the truck was slowing us down. And we never made impact with the wall in the middle. And Praise God. Yeah, it was a miracle. Mm -hmm. But as I thought about the accident early in the hours of this morning, because I think we got home about one o'clock, then Dwayne left because his car was at my house. And then um, Mike Hayden said I had to rewrite the whole sermon. <laughs> so, because I had a sermon ready for today on compassion but I'm going to mix it all together. But there's only one explanation. And as Dwayne Krieg picked up Mike and Diane at the Baumhart exit two hours later, he started singing, Jesus, take the wheel. 
<laughs> and I really think that's what happened. I mean, it was amazing. Did you see the glass break? No, I kept seeing that wall. That's all I saw was that wall, like the whole, it seemed like forever. And I'm like, please don't let us hit. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I just saw it. And I'm like, please let please let. I kept saying the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> but it was a miracle last night. God was with us in that moment, just like we pray that God is with us in this moment at church. And it's my prayer that God is always with each of us, protecting us as we walk on this journey of life. There's a, a point that in team building exercises at work or philanthropic organizations that do team building things, there's always the question of who do you want on your boat? Have you, any of you ever had to play that? If you could, or who do you want on your island? I, I mean, there's many different versions of that. And I tell you what, after spending two weeks <laughs> with people that you only see, usually on Sunday morning for one hour, you learn so much about the people that we were with. One thing, I mean, and I, I think everybody came home liking each other even more than we did before we left. I mean, we ate together, everybody mingled. Sometimes we were in family groups, sometimes we were so mixed up it wasn't funny. But you learn so much about people. And one thing, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad Don's not here today, because as a tour guide, we say there are imposters of homeless people or gypsies or that kind of stuff asking for money. I don't know that Don came home with one red cent <laughs> because he, Don had compassion and he wasn't gonna be the judge of who was, who was telling the truth or who was acting or who was legitimately in need. But when times get tough, who do you want on your boat? Who do you want to be there to support you, to be that calming force, to help you when you don't know what to do next? For Mike, Diane, Duane, and I, Jesus was with us, and there was no other explanation. But I tell you, in the moment, we had not come to a stop. And you would think the preacher would be the one to start praying. It was Diane. I mean, she was, I mean, she was praying out loud. And it ended with the Lord's Prayer when we came to a stop. You learn so much about people in times of trial or trouble. On our first afternoon in Rome this last week, we did have one other incident. And you can go ahead and change the slide. <laughs> the first thing I do once everybody gets settled into the hotel room is we get on the metro and we go to the Spanish Steps. It's the farthest thing away from our hotel, and we make a leisurely walk. Oh, Sandy is shaking her head in denial because we no walked. Walk. It was seven miles a day. But in order to be kind, there's an elevator that very few people know about, and I think it's not that people don't know about it. I think people, for the reason that we found out, are afraid to use it. Because we got in the elevator, it looks like we are just one big happy family. This is already day eight of our trip. The elevator door closed. Dwayne Huff says, let's do a selfie. <laughs> and the elevator goes clunk. Don Palmer, he tries to strong arm the door to get it open to no avail. There's a help button. Um, Linda, yeah, yeah. Linda, the one that hit the help button? Yeah. And yeah. someone come, came on and said in broken English that someone would be there. It would take them about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, that 10 minutes, whether it was 10 minutes or 20 or 30, it seemed like eternity. Mm -hmm. And as we were stuck in that elevator, and we were all perfectly dry when we got in there, we were all literally dripping wet from the sweat of 98.6 degrees in a room in an elevator that it clearly says maximum 11 people. <laughs> so the guy finally comes. We are at the top and everybody comes out. And I don't think we talked to each other. We didn't take another selfie. I think everybody just wanted out of there. 
But we went to the top of the Spanish steps, which are 135 steps down. So I thought by taking the elevator, we would save 135 steps and just go down the steps. If you've never heard anything about the Spanish steps though, um, they were built in the 1500s when Rome was being rebuilt. And just like our Statue of Liberty comes from the French, the French paid for the Spanish steps to be built. And it, they're called the Spanish steps, not French steps. But, um, the money that was donated by the country of France um, built them. And if you ever watched the movie Roman Holiday, it was, um, came out in 1953. She's the one who did the elegant walk down them and had gelato on the steps. But it is a beautiful place to go because Rome is built on seven hills and it has the most beautiful sunset. I don't think, I think um, Seanette, which is Donna and Sandy's niece and Don's, um, I think it's the only one that got a picture of the sunset there because I think everybody just wanted to get down on the ground. <laughs> In that elevator, we learned different things about people. Talk about a team building event. Have any of you ever been to an escape room? It is no fun. And it was just as bad as being in an escape room because the anxiety just went up. I can honestly say that I remained somewhat calm, um, but the emotions and the body temperatures rose to new levels. And by the time we got out, we were ready to just have nothing to do with the Spanish steps. <laughs> but who do you want on your boat when things become uncomfortable and when tragedy happens? In any storm of life, we need each other. We each have different gifts that we bring. And really, Sandy Palmer was the calm, always. She was. And you too, Karen. But, <laughs> so, but this is what I said. What did we learn in difficult moments when the train strike happened? What did Diane do? She laughed when we were in the elevator. She laughed, and that was a gift to all of us. She gave us the gift of humor. Physical strength came from Don Palmer as he tried to open that door. <laughs> Dwayne Huff was usually the resounding voice of reason. Sandy Palmer, the quiet calm. Russell, um, Karen's significant other, was um, always had good, good, profound thoughts when it came to what happened and why it happened. Karen, as I said, brought peace. Mike then caught every moment of our journey as the group photographer. Karen's sister, Linda, and her husband, Roger, they gave us the sense of adventure. And although none of us had all the answers as a collective, we played a role in problem solving to help us make this trip, the trip of a lifetime. We ended our trip in, a, in a, a small town on the Mediterranean Sea called Positano. And we had flip-flopped a few things because it was gonna be rainy. And the storm that swelled, this whole bay is usually filled with boats. And that day there were four dinghies out there strapped, but the waves were higher. The, the water came way up to the restaurants. And I truly felt that the, the water looked angry. And sometimes that's how life is with us. Life and work present struggles for each of us. And we all <coughs> face challenges that come from living a life that is neither predictable nor in our control. We all want our life to be easy and pleasant, but things happen, like train strikes, or getting stuck in an elevator, or rain when you least expect it. But God was with us because it only rained when we stopped to eat. And it would pour and then it would stop. But unfortunately, life doesn't work that way for all of us. The seas get stormy and toss us around violently when we least expect it. But who do we want in our boat? 
Who would you want to be in your boat of life when you experience tough times or rough waters? When the waters get rough, our fate, our join together in the struggle, and if we all work together with compassion, we can get through it together as a team. And if we take a step back a little bit, we realize that whether we were on a trip together or we are a church or a community, we are all in this boat of life together. It doesn't have to be an actual boat. It could be at work or at church or a family matter. But if we step back far enough, we can realize that the whole world is in this boat with us and we all need to work together with compassion and peace to create that in our world. We need to live a compassionate life. And trust me, there were moments in that elevator where someone expressed a course of action that others thought was illogical, and voices did get a little heightened, um, especially when Ring the button again, ring the button again, <laughs> ring the button again. I think we pressed it a total of four times. And every time, it's like she had a little thing in English to read. Someone is walking to the elevator. It will take 10 minutes. Because 10 minutes later, she said, they'll be there in 10 minutes. But we endured the suffering and the uncomfortable minutes because we were in it together. I think sometimes we get so busy in life that we don't notice that there are people around us. We all have jobs, we all have families, we all have responsibilities, and sometimes things can keep us focused on our own needs and not on the needs of others. And it is amazing how many times I caught Don out of the corner of my eye dropping money into someone's little cup as we walked around. I was ready to give you lunch money if, if, if he gave it all away. But I think, how many years have you been married? 42? 31. 31? Ooh. Seems like. I think she has learned a lot in her 31 years of marriage. She probably gave him so much money each day, and, and then everything was good. But we are all in this together. And I think that the group of people that we had, just like the congregation we have here at church, and those people that we have in our families, that if we work together and use the strengths that each of us has to offer, we can get through these difficult times. In John 3, 17, it says, if anyone sees his brother in need and yet closes his heart of compassion, the love is the love of God in him, and the scripture says we all do have a heart of compassion. In that space in our heart that God wants to work through us to be his hands and his feet. And we can either choose to let that heart of compassion expand or we can let it close. And if we continue to ignore the needs of compassion around us, like praying for the people in Maine. I mean, there are so many things and we can just walk like a horse with blinders on its eyes and ignore those things. And God doesn't expect us to help people in ways that we can't. And he doesn't expect us to go and help. He doesn't expect us to give money all the time. But saying a prayer in someone else's time of need is growing that heart of compassion because God wants to work through each of us, not just me as a minister, or Barb as a minister's wife, or Beth as a Sunday school teacher. God wants to work through all of us. And all through the Bible, we can read so many stories of where Jesus walked over to blind people. He didn't turn around and ignore them. He didn't ignore their needs, he walked towards them. And he looked them right in the face. And Although it was a blind man and they couldn't see, I bet you they could feel Jesus' compassion, whether they could see or not. Jesus' compassion had action, and it moved forward. The compassion that lives in each and every one of us 
needs to continue to move forward. Last night in the moment of the accident when Diane started praying out loud, it was probably the first thing I remember because I don't remember hearing or seeing or feeling any impact. The first thing I heard was Diane praying from her heart for God to protect us. God used Diane last night to bring calm in what could have been a tra tragic storm. And just like Diane, we're all directed to follow that love and let God guide us when he speaks to us, when we see the need of someone else. Jesus wants us to be an instrument of his peace. And when we were in Assisi, where St. Francis was from, that's what he was all about. And Jesus said there are two great commandments. The first one is love God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. And he said the second is just like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. Compassion is about being in that moment. It's about what we have in our hands, whether it's money or talent or encouragement or a shoulder to cry on, a prayer for someone else. God can use whatever gifts and tools that he's placed in you to be that person of compassion. Let's pray. God, we do ask that you would open our hearts of compassion and let us see the needs of others around us near and far. And may we stop what we're doing in the rush of life to take some time, maybe even some money, to be someone else's miracle, to follow in your steps of love and compassion in a world so much in need. May people see the difference in us and the light that you shine through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together. 327, Jesus loves me. can't do this on our own, but with his help, may we let go so God can give us a new start each day to be an instrument of his peace. Amen. Amen.